training right now on the ultimate podcast launch workbook. So feel free to watch this video as you're filling this out, as you're going through the motions, and then pause me if you actually wanna read the text that's on the workbook, cause I'm not gonna read that verbatim. I'm gonna actually just riff on these topics. So hopefully in addition to the video, you have a lot of legwork to actually get this done so that you're ready for your launch. So let's get started. All right. Okay, so this is really broke down so that you can get this done in five weeks. Now, for some of you, you might be like, Jamie, you are freaking crazy. I want this to take three months. That's fine. But I feel like doing this in a month is totally doable so that if you set your launch date from today, four weeks from now, you're going to be in a good place and you're going to feel really great about your launch if you follow this process and uh, you fill this worksheet out as we're going. So please don't rush through this. Please take your time uh, because this doesn't, <laughs> but don't take too long, okay? Please, if you sit down for a day or a few hours and you go through this workbook step by step, by the end of the day, you're gonna have everything you need to launch your podcast for real, okay? So that being said, let's start here. And with this in mind, you're gonna have to pause me, okay? I want you to map out what you're gonna do this week let's start there okay and if you want to actually duplicate this and you want to do this for every single week go ahead and do that okay but i want you to map out what you're going to do each day of the week even if it's one small tiny thing if that's the way you roll do something every day this week that's going to put you one step closer to your launch if you're anything like me i would just block out a whole day and i would just get the thing done when I have free time. So I, I'm more of that type of person. I would like to set aside like a Wednesday and just knock out the whole thing. So depending on your style, you know, you do what is best for you, but this is how you can track your progress and track your goals for at least this week. Enjoy. Okay. Uh, when it comes to strategy and branding, that's ultimately what you need to build the foundations. If you don't have that stuff figured out, you're not going to be able to create launch content. You're not going to know what it's called. You're not going to be able to start talking about it and promoting it and sharing it. And so this is where you've got to start. Okay. So what I want you to do is you're going to brainstorm. I want you to brainstorm your title, keywords that are going to resonate and attract your ideal listeners. These are going to be SEO friendly. And you're going to plug these keywords into the title, into this, the, the description, but the description and then your very first episodes can be titled this and then also in their descriptions too. So take some time. I would honestly start by brain dumping keywords first, just because you're gonna be able to pull those for the other elements of this sheet. Okay, so think of keywords. Think of if you were your ideal client, what would you be searching for online? Now also feel free to use uh, other online research tools for trying to figure out what keywords would resonate with your audience. This is gonna be really important for helping your show stand out. So don't just skip over the keyword part, okay? And really understanding your target audience is gonna be crucial for just making sure that you're speaking to the right people in a language that they understand, not, that, not just that you understand, if that makes sense. So we wanna be speaking in their language specifically, okay? So just write down your target audience who exactly are you looking to speak to? Okay, so for example, are you looking to speak to professional business owners and entrepreneurs who are looking to make a difference in the world? Maybe they're leaders, maybe they're coaches or they're speakers or authors, like they have a message to share, they have a mission on their heart. So start to just brain dump what this person is all about and what really matters to them. What subjects would they be interested in learning? Okay, maybe there's like a core four or five subjects that they're really passionate about. Write those down. Okay, your category, I'm kind of going around this way. Okay, we're going clockwise here because the title hangs the most people up. So your category, you get to choose one or two categories. It kind of depends on who you're using as your host. So like Spotify for podcasters will only allow you to have one. But what I would like you to do is spend some time on like Apple Podcasts or Spotify and look at people who are known in your market, okay? And I want you to see what they're speaking about and what category their podcast is hosted in. Because what that's gonna show you is where your target audience is currently looking category-wise for shows. So then what we can do is pull the top category and that can be yours. That can be the category that you're looking to dominate. 
all right? And then when it comes to the title ideas, uh, don't get super hung up. I am a big fan of whiteboarding title ideas. So like what I would do is I would sit down and plug in all my keywords and kind of like move them around and just see what fits right and see what feels good. And that could be something that takes you a day or two because you might want to sit with it. But I want to recommend you don't just do a one word thing like influence. You need to make sure that you're plugging in more keywords into your title, also making it search friendly. A one word thing might have worked like (laughs) seven years ago, but the game has changed and you've really got to make your name sound catchy, set you apart and also be searchable. Okay, so feel free if you want to run your title idea by me, you definitely can find me over on Instagram coach with Jamie and just ask. I'm more than happy to help you with this. Okay, beautiful. With this stuff done with your title ready, you can now this is going to blow your mind. You can now start creating your cover art because you know your target audience, you know the category. Therefore, you can go and research other podcasts, other shows. And you've got your title, which is what you need to to make your cover art. So don't get super hung up on this section. Move forward, okay? Please. The cover art, okay? I want you to make this yours, all right? So this is your mood board. Okay, this is a super powerful exercise when you want to create your cover art. So down here, I put some branding. Don't use this branding. This is my branding, okay? But... I want you to go in here and make this yours. Add your header font, add your body font, add your fancy font, and add your colors, okay? Because when you have this, let's say you're creating this cover art or you're paying someone on, say, Fiverr to edit your cover art, then they're going to have your branding information so you're able to make your brand look seamless on all of your social media channels, especially for your launch content that's coming up. So take the time and do this. And then what I recommend is you actually go into Apple Podcasts and you start screenshotting your favorite cover art photos and you put them here, okay? And then just start to make a folder on your computer desktop that has high quality professional photos and headshots of you, if you're gonna have your your face, right? So that's what I recommend you do. So you basically want to create a folder or something that has information for your cover art. So it's going to have your branding, your photos, and your inspiration. And this you can send to someone on Fiverr and have them create it for you. All right. Uh, if you're if you're going to edit this in Canva, uh, I've allowed you to that to do that following the link uh, within the portal. If you're going to edit it in Canva, make sure you to make a copy first, or else everyone's going to see your your branding. Uh, but you're going to be able to actually edit these things inside of Canva by dragging and dropping and copying and pasting. Uh, just so you know, too, uh, one thing, if you don't have brand colors, what I like to do is choose a photo that feels like your brand's vibe. And then you can use the eyedropper tool and just pull some colors from there that you like. Then that's going to make your feed look really sync. Cool. All right. So pause me if you need to, or you could watch this entire video and then come back and implement. All right, we're just gonna breeze right along because I know the power of the pause button, all right? We're not filming this live. Okay, now we're gonna talk about equipment and software. This holds so many people up and please don't let it hold you up, okay? It's not a huge deal. So I'm gonna show you my high quality tech stack. That is the equipment that I'm using right now, okay? And then I'll walk you through my reasoning for each thing. Okay, so this microphone right here is the Shure SM7B microphone. This is like the best in the game right now. This was actually the microphone that Michael Jackson filmed Thriller on. So that's pretty awesome. Not this exact one, but like, you know what I mean? This type of microphone. Uh, But if you're traveling and you're someone who's going to be doing this actively on the road or you want to be filming outside a lot, I don't recommend this mic because you've got to connect it to this cloud lifter here. And the Scarlett Focusrite, which is, I can't show you because it's taped under my desk, like nicely, it looks, it looks nice, but I can't show you it, but that's what's gonna control your volume, okay? And then this boosts the microphone because this is a very quiet mic. So you need that in order to give it juice, so to speak. So if you're looking for the best in the game, order this tech stack, all right? 
If you're looking for a budget-friendly microphone that's more uh, affordable, but also good if you're traveling a lot or if you're gonna do this like outside and you just wanna connect to your computer, definitely snag like a Blue Yeti microphone or something of a similar USB mic. That's what I started Mom's Freedom Maker with when that was my very first podcast, okay? So it's a good mic. It's, I actually still have it <laughs> literally in the cabinet behind me. So I'll use it if I ever go film outside. Um, you can also, if you want to like go on walks and do your podcast when you're walking around, there's little clip on microphones that you can use if you're going to be doing this more on the go. So those are like, I don't know, 20 bucks on Amazon. So uh, you can do this on a budget for sure, or you can go um, top tier. All right. Um, what I, what I would personally recommend for a hosting platform, if you're doing both audio and video is Spotify for podcasters. Uh, number one, it's free, which is pretty cool, but Number two is it's been the first in the game at video recording and they're going to start to release new features that are going to show more like Instagram reels on the Spotify feed. So if you have a video element, they're going to just start to pull random clips from your video and they're going to start showing it on the feed to more people, AKA attracting more listeners. So that's really cool. Um, right now you'll see like the camera that I'm using currently is the Sony a 6400. And then I have like this, lens on it. I don't know which kind it is. Hold on. Sigma. It's a 16 millimeter Sigma lens. Uh, and that's like a good vlogging camera. So if you're going to do video, you want your, your video to be high quality, right? So that's what that camera is for. And then the cam link addition to that makes it so you can use it as a webcam like I'm doing right now, which is super cool. Okay. So there's your options for tech if you're looking to do audio and video. If it's audio only, obviously you just need a mic. Don't worry about the camera. Uh, for editing, I get a lot of people asking like, hey, Jamie, I don't have a MacBook computer, but how am I supposed to edit my episodes? Uh, then you can use something like Adobe Podcast. That tool is really, really great. The tool is really, really great. <laughs> okay. <gasps> Yes, so the tool is really great. Uh, or you can use GarageBand if you have a Mac and you're doing audio only. That's where I started Mom's Freedom Maker. I am a big fan of let's just keep it simple or we're not gonna do it. So keep it simple with your tech. If you wanna go crazy and get like Premiere Pro and you wanna start doing all these like intricate things, you totally can do that. Uh, but that's not necessarily my jam. So I'm not the one to provide the really fancy tech options for editing but YouTube would be a great place to go for that. Okay, um, headphones, I recommend big, big, big boys. Like you've probably seen me with mine on my, on my head, these ones. And the reason for that is primarily to listen back to recording afterwards to see what the quality sounds like. And then also to keep you focused. I find that it minimizes distractions and then it also kind of tells the outside world, you're doing something really cool, don't disturb you. <laughs> Uh, cool. All right. And then when it comes to hosting, there are like, I don't know, dozens of choices that you could use. Uh, I listed the top three that I typically recommend to clients. Spotify for podcasters kind of already spoke on that one. Um, I would say the only negative there is I don't feel like the analytics tracking is super legit. I, I just doesn't feel that high quality to me, but it is a free source that offers video. So you know, can't complain too much. Buzzsprout seems really awesome. Uh, I have used it with a client and I really did like that system. However, it doesn't appear to have the video option yet. Podbean, I've spoken with someone very high up on their team and they have incredible things to say about that and they're very innovative as well. But I would recommend you guys search online, see what other people are saying because I want this video to be more long lasting. So I don't want to talk about too many features because it's just going to date the video. So please do your own homework there. See what fits in your budget. See what makes the most sense for your goals with your podcast and then just choose one. You can always change your RSS feed location. That's your host. You can always change that by literally like a click of a couple buttons. So you're not married to the system forever, which is super cool. So allow that to give you peace of mind and just choose one. All right, cool. Now we're going to talk about marketing, guest booking and scripting. 
Okay. Now inside of this portal, you're actually going to have a script that you can plug and play. That's going to help you like follow a specific framework for your podcast when you're doing like solo shows. Okay. So I won't go super deep into that in this video because you have that one, but we will talk about your first few episodes. What I want you to do here is write out what the topic is going to be for your teaser, episode one, episode two, episode three, and episode four. The reason I have these here is you're going to want to launch your podcast with your teaser and first three episodes already done. So the day you submit your podcast to Apple Podcasts, you are going to submit it with those four episodes. And then this fourth episode here, right at the bottom, is for next week. <laughs> okay, that's so that you're already ahead a week when you go to hit publish. Okay, if you want to be ahead a month, you do you. That is awesome. I'm not that far ahead, okay? So I think getting a week ahead is a bonus. That is super nice. So write down your goal and then map out your first episodes. What you're going to start to see is let's say in your teaser episode, which I recommend you listen to mine, okay, is you're going to give, a, give an idea of why you wanted to start your podcast. What is your mission? What are they going to walk away with? Why should they listen to you? Like toot your own horn a little bit, like talk yourself up. Why should they listen to you? Why are you the authority and the expert in this space? Okay. What makes you different than other podcasts? Get deep into your backstory, be vulnerable, allow people to connect with you. Okay. And then also let them know how often your show is going to be coming out. What can they expect of that? Are you going to bring on guests? What kind of guests? How do they connect with you online, on social media? Okay, these are all really great elements to have inside of your teaser. And then from there, kind of flow into your episodes as you see fit. And it's kind of cool because you might see that they start to all like intertwine together. You'll be filming one and you'll be like, oh, it'd be really cool to talk about this next. And then it's just all gonna flow. So my, my one key piece of advice is just to start <laughs> because then it's gonna be like this waterfall effect and it's gonna feel really good, okay? Uh, cool. So from here, what I really want you to do is come up with a marketing plan. I've already got all the questions for you. All I need you to do is journal through them. Okay, how often will I post episodes? Will it be once a week? Three times a week, every single day? Is it gonna be once a month? Okay, and then within those, how many of them are gonna be solo? How many of them are gonna include a guest? Who are a few guests I'd like to interview straight away? Maybe you have some people in mind already. So for my show, if you guys look, I come out with episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And typically the first Tuesday and the third Tuesday of the month, we do an interview. Okay, so that's always subject to change. I, I kind of tend to play with things, but that's typically what people can, can expect from my show, okay? All right, so get clear. Now we're moving right along into launch and promotion. Pause me if you want to read this, <laughs> okay? Um, okay, so now I really want you to think when you're launching, you don't just wait until the day that your podcast comes out to tell the world that you have a podcast. You need to start teasing that this is coming along. Share this workbook, literally like share a screenshot of you coming up with your title and your keywords and your description. S screenshot that, share it on your Instagram story. Tell them, hey, guess what? Something's coming, okay? Or working with Coach with Jamie to launch my podcast, Eek. right? Ask them what they would name it. Say, hey, I'm debating between this title, that title, that title. What do you guys recommend? What do you think would be best? You tell me. Yeah? So involve them. Say, hey, I'm debating between this cover art and this cover art. Which one do you like best? A or B? And do one of those like, um, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> like split tests, okay? Cool. So that's like pre-launch. You gotta be warming people up, getting them hyped, getting them excited. Yeah. And then ask yourself, cool. So, so I'm going to film this one episode. Then how else do I want to use that content? Do I want to turn the transcriptions into a blog? Do I want to have a YouTube video from the video? How about I make a couple Instagram reels from it, or I pull a quote or I make a carousel. How am I going to repurpose this content out on social media? 
right? That's gonna promote your podcast. Are you gonna share it in Facebook groups, on your Instagram? Where are you gonna do all this? Okay, start to think about that. Brain dump. All right, and then let's start to talk about consistency and tracking metrics, okay? So you really wanna make sure that you're showing up consistently as a podcast host. You don't, please, if you're watching me and I'm helping you do this, please do not be the kind of person that shows up for three months and then just like pod fades and you're just done because of X, Y, Z. You are doing this because you are in this for the long game. This is not something that you're just gonna start and just be done with tomorrow. This is something that you're gonna look back in a year, two years, three years and say, damn, I've got 250 episodes that document my journey, my experience, and that my potential clients can go back and listen to and get provided value for. And it's just evergreen content that lives on forever. So show up consistently. And when it comes to tracking your metrics, to be honest, I didn't check my metrics for the first like seven months. So if you don't want to check your metrics for a little while, feel free. If you're a crazy numbers person and you want to be all up in that every day of the week, you can do that too. Uh, It's up to you, but I didn't track my metrics in the beginning. But once you're on a good consistent schedule and you feel like keeping track of metrics, seeing what's performing, what's working, what's not, I highly recommend that you do so. So what I want you to do here is really define specific goals for your podcast, such as boosting your downloads, your engagement rates, right? How many listeners you're going to be targeting, Maybe you're gonna be guest podcasting more. Let's just get clear on what those goals truly look like so that you've got, you've got something to aim for. Okay, I think that's really important. Hmm. Okay, so then from here, what we're gonna do is you're going to take some time and you're just gonna map out what day of the week and what time your episode is gonna come out. So for example, on Tuesday, let's say you have a solo episode and it's coming out at 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Boom, Thursday, same thing, boom. Or let's say you're gonna do interviews on Fridays at 4 a.m., solos on Wednesdays, whatever you wanna do, go ahead, drop it down in here. Um, And this is subject to change too. I started with three episodes, it was too much for my lifestyle, especially with a baby on the way. And then I scaled it back to one, that wasn't enough. Now I'm right at two, which feels like a happy medium for myself, okay? So definitely figure out your schedule here as that's gonna help you when getting started. All right, now here we have a growth plan, okay? So I want you to journal and make a plan to track key metrics, analyze trends, engage with your audience, and iterate based on insights gained, okay? This is gonna allow you to continuously improve your podcast and ultimately achieve your goals with podcasting. So just basically talk about how you're going to grow your show. (laughs) Okay. Keep it simple. So a pro tip for this course is to watch the video on double speed so that you can save time. And if you've gotten any value from this program thus far, no matter where you're at, head over to testimonial.to slash Jamie, and you will be able to leave a testimonial, which will allow you to win special prizes. It should take three minutes or less. And I would really, really appreciate that. And also join Unbound CEOs Academy for the full masterclass experience where we're going to get into post launch and guest podcasting, as well as having everything laid out from this big, long program in step-by-step chunks that has resources, guides, downloads, templates, all the things right inside every step of the way. So can't wait to see you inside. All right. I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes about your setup. What is the tech that you need to actually run a podcast? I'm going to share with you what I used from the beginning, what I'm using now, why I made this switch, and what I would ultimately recommend that you do as you're just getting started. So let's dive in. So the very first microphone that I used when starting Moms Free to Maker podcast was this guy right here. Oh, there we go. This is the Blue Yeti. It's a USB mic. So all you do is you plug this into your computer and it's gonna work. Okay, it's that simple. And all I did was right on my MacBook Pro, I used GarageBand. It's free, it's already on your computer. I still just use GarageBand and QuickTime Player. It's no fancy tech that I use at all. 
Can you find something else? Yes, but it's not necessary. So if you're looking for simple, use GarageBand, okay? So this microphone I thought was awesome. It was a great start. I wanna say it was 150 bucks. Uh, however, I felt like you really could hear external noise pretty well. Like if Kylo was screaming or if he started crying and the nanny was watching him, you could hear it on here. Or if there were cars that were driving past, just any type of background noise was picked up. So if you're in an area that is pretty noisy, I would recommend not going this direction. Uh, however, it worked fine. I enjoyed it and I filmed like at least 75 episodes on it. So this thing was awesome. Definitely would recommend the Blue Yeti. I've put a link below this video. So if you wanna get a link to this similar one, go ahead and click below this video. But now I'm gonna talk about what I switched to and why, okay? I'm a very big fan of beginning with the end in mind. You guys, this is a podcast. Audio quality is so important. And when you talk about building up a brand, like I wanted my brand to be the Mercedes of podcasting and coaching. And so I knew that that meant I needed to get the best of the best. So with that being said, this microphone that you see here, this is the Shure SM7B. It is actually the microphone that Michael Jackson filmed Thriller on. It is known as the best podcasting mic on the market. Uh, it doesn't really matter what's going on in the background, you're not gonna hear it. Like this thing picks up my voice and my voice only. If, if budget is not something that you're super worried about right now, I would get this bad boy. Like no questions asked, okay? So I've got this Shure SM7B. All of these links are below this video. I've got a Gator Frameworks boom arm that's connected to my desk right over here. All right. And what you need with this mic, don't let it freak you out. I was so freaked out by all the things that I needed, but it's truly not that much. Okay. So let me show you what I have. We have, hold on. Okay. So you need to connect the microphone to a cloud lifter, okay? And the reason for this is because it makes the microphone louder. This is a very soft microphone, so you need this in order to pick up good sound, okay? And then you need this guy, okay? And I've linked this below. So this is a Scarlett Solo. It really just allows you to make any adjustments that you need for the audio. You're gonna need both of these both of these things to use this microphone. So all in all, I don't know, I'd have to say it's under $800 for the setup, but I would recommend it. If you're serious about podcasting, if you know you're in it for the long game, just invest in good equipment. It's worth it, I promise. And trust me, when you go back and you re-listen to your shows from the beginning, you're gonna be thankful that you had good audio. <laughs> Like, I regret not doing this sooner, okay? So, let me set this back over here. Oof. And I will show you my full office setup in a later module as we get into personal branding and, uh, like, setting up your studio. However, if you're interested in doing any type of camera work, like I do my podcast as an audio video podcast, right now I'm using the Sony A6400 and that's what's capturing the video super nicely. So that's an awesome camera. I, it's got like the little flip up thing so you can I can actually see myself on the camera right now as well, which is nice. That's my setup, truly. And I'll show you these lights, which I, I promise you I'm gonna do a full walkthrough of all, all of this stuff later, but this is this is it. We've just got lights like this just shining up at me. That's all. Okay. So no matter where you're at on your journey, whether you're looking for something budget-friendly like the Blue Yeti and you're just like, you know what? I just want something that's gonna get my voice out there. Go with the Blue Yeti. Go with something more lower budget. 
But if you are like, I'm committed to podcasting, I want something high quality, I want it to be the best of the best, this, this is 100% what you, sh- what you should go with. So just keep it simple. Trust me, I wouldn't steer you the wrong way. Oof, don't get hung up on the tech. Get something order. If you're gonna start your podcast, just jump online right now and just order it because There's nothing worse than getting inspired to film an episode and not having a microphone, not having a way to film. But one one last thing before we wrap it up here. I film a lot of podcast episodes just using the voice memos on my phone. That's it. I have like 105 recordings in here. So... I've filmed episodes just literally using my phone. Granted, the audio quality was pretty horrible, but I was like, I'm feeling this right now. I have to get this message out. So I just filmed it right on my phone. So seriously, don't overthink the tech. It's actually quite simple. And then lastly, we're going to jump into what software should you use, okay? If you're gonna be having courses, a blog, a group coaching program, you want to have a website. Kajabi also offers a podcasting platform as well. It's not what I use for my public podcast. However, it's an all-in-one platform. They also have email providers. Like Kajabi has everything that you can need. Sales funnels, pipelines, everything, okay? So if all of that all-in-one platform sounds good for you, there's a link to Kajabi below this video. I would recommend that you check that out. If you just need something simple to host your podcast on, I use Libsyn. Libsyn has been around one of the longest podcast hosting platforms that exists. So I would recommend Libsyn. Uh, There's a ton of other ones out there. I've heard like Podbean. um, I can't even list anymore because I just use Libsyn. It's worked for me. If you want to use Libsyn as well, I will tag a link below to that too. Keep it simple. Don't overthink the tech. Order your microphone. You got this. In this lesson, we're going to talk about starting to create your virtual studio. Now, this is something that I want you to do sooner rather than later because all the content you film, all the calls that you take, most of the time, they're going to be happening in your own personal space, whether that be in your bedroom, in your office, in your living room. So we've got to make this represent your brand because this is the one thing that your audience, your customers, your clients, they're all going to be seeing this, okay? And a lot of times it's their first time that they get to see you, right? Or if you're guesting on a podcast, like people are going to be attracted to you and they're going to see you. And so you've got to really visually represent your brand, uh, no matter what we've created for your brand thus far. This is one of the most important things because this is your opportunity to attract and really show that you have a quality brand. Okay, so a lot of times, like you've probably seen this on your social media, right? You'll have someone show up on a podcast recording or show up on a call and they've got a messy bed behind them, horrible lighting, <laughs> maybe the camera's like shooting up their nose or way too high or they're way down here. You know, I, I can give so many examples of like poor quality virtual studio setups. But what I really want to emphasize is three specific elements that are really going to set your quality ahead of the rest. Okay. Even if we're just 1% better in terms of quality versus the masses, like that's going to set your brand apart from everybody else that's online, right? And when you can show up and show that you take pride in your space and that you have quality branding in terms of your virtual studio, it's just going to show that you really value what it is that you're doing. You, you take pride in your work and pride in your brand and you've taken the time to set this up correctly. Okay. So take the time, like pause now and go ahead and like, let's get clear on what this should look like. And if you need to order some new stuff, do it. Do it today, right? Don't wait. Don't sleep on this. This is really important to get in now. So the three categories. Number one is background, okay? Now I'm working with what I've got here. This is our rig, okay? This is literally our living room that's behind me. But I didn't just leave it boring and just normal, right? Like what I've actually done is like dimmed down the lights. We've turned on a a light down here to just give it some movement, give it some like fun stuff happening in the background. Okay. I've made sure like I'm lit. 
there's a light here that lights me up. And then I've got even this little one, little one right here in the background. And sometimes I even light that candle back there. Okay. And then I make sure like there's no child's toys. There's nothing crazy happening behind me. Look, if there is, and I'm in a pinch, I just throw it to the side, right? Because you want your background to just set the scene. You don't want it to be distracting for whoever it is that's on the other side. Whether this be literally a sales call or like a podcast interview, you just want the vibe to be right. Okay. So look behind you. Like, look back at a recording that you have of you speaking. Maybe you've done a podcast interview before. How was your background? Were you mindful of what that looked like? And if you have text or you have a background behind you right now, is part of it being cut off? How is the quality of your background? What does it look like? And I'm going to put, it's not going to be this video. It's going to be below this video. I have a walkthrough of when I had my virtual studio set up in a home office. And so I'll give you some ideas of what you can do. If you don't like the background that you have behind you, there's actually a way to order panels that you can put up on your wall behind you that looks super legit. And it's really inexpensive to do like less than a couple hundred dollars. And you could have a studio set up that looks so sick. Okay. So I will put that below this video, but for now, check the background that you're working with behind you and work with what you've got. Look, I do some of these calls now in my bedroom, but I make sure that I make, I make the bed. I turn on the lighting. I make sure the lighting looks right, right? I still put effort into the backdrop no matter what. Okay. So ask yourself how you're doing that. Okay. Number two is quality equipment. Okay. I really want to stress this. Like if you've got a computer and you're working with that camera on your computer, I would recommend upgrading it. Okay. Like right now, what you're looking at me through is a DSLR camera that I'm using as a webcam. Okay. Now I'm not saying you've got to go that tech heavy, but you can invest in like a smaller webcam that at least boosts the quality of your camera by a little. Okay. Now, the reason that you want to do this once again is most people are just using the standard equipment that comes on their computer, which is usually their MacBook. It's usually that little tiny camera on the front. Now, by you putting in more effort and you getting a higher quality camera, it's going to look really good, okay? Not only is it going to look, look good, it's going to look more professional, okay? And your brand needs to look professional online in terms of positioning, okay? I'm going to, like, beat this. <laughs> I'm going to beat this into you, like, and create it into you, okay? Okay, quality equipment. Now, uh, this microphone, this is a really good example of like an investment that I made because I know like this is the best podcasting microphone that you can get on the marketplace. Okay. Now, when we get into podcasting, I'm going to talk about tech that's the best of the best. And I'm going to talk about tech that's budget friendly for when you first get started. So don't worry. You don't have to go ordering the best of the best if right now that's not where you're at financially and you want to wait. That's fine. But just understand that it does speak wonders of your brand when you are using really high quality content and you are making sure that your listeners and your audience is getting the best of the best from you, right? And realizing that it's evergreen content that you're putting out there most of the time. And so by using good quality from the start, like is just really helpful for, for as you grow this and as you continue like developing your brand. Okay, number three. So we had number one was backdrop. Number two is quality equipment. Number three is the lighting. Okay, this is so important. And honestly, something that I've, <laughs> I've struggled with this, like my entire journey of like filming videos online, honestly. And you'll see that if you go back and watch some of my previous videos on my even social media platforms, right? It's, it's really difficult to get the lighting right, in my opinion, uh, especially if you're working with natural lighting. So what I would say is if you could get like a studio light box, you can find them on Amazon, at least get a beauty ring, like something to wear you or like, yeah, one of those ring lights, something that you can control the lighting source is like really important. At this point, I'm like pretty, I, I think like pretty blessed in this rig because I'm just literally using if you see the, the lights back here, that lighting is actually pretty perfect in terms of like when I have the shades drawn, it actually puts off a really nice light for uh, recording. So that's actually all that I'm using right now. Natural lighting works great, but it's just you can't really control it. So get something that you can control and you are in charge of. Uh, uh, if you watch a lot of YouTube videos, they'll talk about the, the idea of having one actually right above your head, right? Like something that's coming in. It's hidden, obviously, off camera. It's coming in and it's right above your head. And then another that's kind of off to the side of you, right? So you get a nice, like, contour on your face. Then you'll see, too, like, I have this light down here. I can actually show you. It's actually off the stand, but it's just, it's actually a two pack. I got it on Amazon. 
But the way we position it down here uh, is just kind of angled upwards, right? So then you get a different coloration on your face to make it less like boring in the lighting. Okay. And what you'll see too in a lot of YouTube uh, studio setups is you'll see a light in the back, like an accent light of some sort. So you could get one that's like glow letters or you could get a Himalayan salt lamp or an Edison bulb, just something that's going to provide like some depth in the background. And you see we have our fireplace going down here, right? And then we do have lighting above, but for some reason it always dies. So that would be going typically. So just look around your space and see how you can put some like intention into designing it and, and, and showing that you've really taken notice of your space. Because think about it, when you're getting on a sales call or when you're getting on a podcast interview, like you're truly inviting someone into your space. And so you want to make it feel like a vibe. Okay, go the extra mile, put the time, energy and effort into setting up your space correctly. And it's going to speak wonders of your personal brand. So that is it for this video. I'm going to drop one below this that walks through my previous virtual studio setup uh, when I had it in a home office. And if you're not working with the background like this, you can actually create one using a similar setup to what I did. Or you can create a type of mobile background that can move around with you. So definitely check that out. And if you have any other questions or you want to send pictures of your existing backdrop and get some ideas of how that could look, feel free to put it into our group. And I would love to offer feedback and help you design your space. So let's get at it. Talk about setting the tone and how to really find the perfect music and sound effects for your podcast. So kicking off with the very first thing you should start to think about is the tone and the style of your podcast. Like if you're looking to attract someone in corporate who's a CEO, who's more serious, like you're going to want to use sound that's much different than somebody who's like a stay at home mom and bubbly and fun and wants to feel like this show is just like her safe space. Maybe you're more spiritual or you love jazz music. Like I want to encourage you to really connect with the vision that you have for your show like the theme song like what represents you in your brand but also something that you feel like your audience is truly going to connect with and relate to this is like one of the only opportunities that you have in the first couple of seconds to really excite someone and bring this show mm, into reality right like like make it feel the way you want it to feel so I want to emphasize like the importance of this and I will say when you hear your song you're probably going to know it. Okay? I will say like this took me way too long. <laughs> way longer than it should have to figure out my music for my show. And I will say that I have changed it. Okay? And I know that kind of goes against what I just said about using it as your brand theme song because it's not really something you'd want to change, but as you grow, as you shift, as your market changes and evolves is with you, you might end up changing your song too and that's okay. Right? Be open to where you're meant to take this experience. And so for some of you that might look like changing things and that's okay. But pick one that's going to represent where you're at right now and really what you want your show to embody. So, um we want to look for royalty free music when possible. I will say that I've used Audio Jungle. That was actually where I found my very first song uh, that was from Audio Jungle. Uh, so what you can do is like feel free to type in whatever your vibe is. Like you could do happy, uplifting music, right? Something like that. Type it in. You're looking for audio and you can actually go through and you can start to listen and get a feel for, you know, what you like, what you don't like. Right. So I will say, like, when you're looking at the audio track here, one thing to start to pay attention to is you want to have a song that has kind of multiple areas where it like goes down, gets quieter. Right. Uh, because what that's going to do is allow you to pull different sections of the song and use it in different places. Right. And then it will naturally come to a close, like like fizzle out on its own rather than like you needing to get in there and like make the song go down or go away it's just going to naturally happen uh, so that's what i've made sure to do in in my songs that i use so uh let's see like this one here if i can give you an example
taking longer than I thought it would. Okay, so you saw that little ding at the end? That's what I'm referring to. That, and then it gives you like multiple entryways. Like you can tell it's the same song, but it has like different levels to it or different parts that you can use. So I really like that. So look for one that kind of ends in a way that sounds like cool and funky. Um, and maybe has a couple different endings. Like let's look at this one. Right. So like that's how I would start looking for the ending. So you want a few different options there. And then in the beginning, I really like it to just it, it's got to like feel like your vibe. Like I want to emphasize that. That's where you got to hook them. Right. You like you want them to just stick around. And even if they're just listening to the song because they don't really know you yet as a host, even if they just want to listen because there's a cool song there, that would be great. Um, I don't run my song for very long. In the show, I want to just kind of like get to it, but you can have your song kind of fizzle out in the background and play behind your voice. So just make sure that you're finding something that's in alignment with you. So you could look up uplifting music, you could look up motivational or inspiring or suspenseful, or, you know, just start to think of words that represent your brand in this way that you could find music to and find it here. Now you'll see, uh, you could you could also look at bestsellers, newest, trending, best rated, all the things there, right? So y you can find them this way. Then you got to purchase them. Make sure you're buying the correct license where it's okay that you're using this in like a public place and that people are going to be listening to you as well. So just make note of that when you're making your purchase. Uh, and you see they range, but they're pretty reasonable in regards to like getting your music, right? So that's how I would use Audio Jungle. It's cool that you're able to listen to the whole song. So I love that. Um, this is actually premium beat. This is what I use for my recent podcast episode. And then I also recommend this to all the clients that we work with and help them launch their podcasts. So you can do something similar here, right? Search by genre, mood, instrument, keyword, whatever you want to use here. So let's say you want to use like a ukulele. You could just type that in there. And then you can do the same thing, right? You just start to listen to these and see what you vibe with. I just would like go down this list, right? So you kind of, I mean, it can be time, it can be time consuming for sure, especially if you're going to be kind of picky with it. Um, before even doing this, or, or if you're starting to do this and you're kind of confused, go listen to a couple podcast episodes, even just the first 30 seconds, and just hear what their music sounds like and hear if, you, like, see if you can find one that's kind of similar to the vibe that you're looking for. It'd be helpful to also search inside of the niche type of podcast that you have. So, like, business podcasts or how to podcasts or education or parenting or whatever you're inside of in terms of niche. Um, and see what kind of music is resonating most with you, right? And then just kind of go down this list here. Like, I like that vibe. Okay, cool. And then when you, when you find a song that works for you, you don't need a subscription, so don't worry about that. That's only if you're going to get five new songs per month, which if you're just using it for this, you don't need to do that. Uh, you would just do this single track. Okay, so you can use this on web and you can use this personal and corporate. It says you can't use it on TV, radio, apps, or in a store. So that would, I mean, we can, podcast is right up there with radio. So click it to the premium. So TV and radio in one country. So double check, make sure that uh, you are going to be okay with this licensing. So feel free to look it up on here. Okay. Websites and social media, online streaming, it's personal, personal use only. Let's see if it actually writes podcast here. Yeah, pilots and public broadcasting only. Okay. In store displays, yeah. Yeah, so y you would definitely need to do the premium version on here. Okay, so just be mindful 
where you're getting your music, like where it's going to go. You can download, you can press the download button and you'll be able to actually hear like specific clips of the song. It's going to have like, um, it'll say like premiumbeat.com. <laughs> In, in this section of the of the tracks but yeah see if you can find one that resonates with you it'll also tell you the length of the show here um it's okay to have it around two and a half minutes uh but like i said just make sure that it has those transitions that align with you and have fun this is gonna be the mood like look at this it says mood right here this is gonna set the mood for your show so make sure that you're finding something that feels good that feels like the type of mood that you want to be bringing to your show into your audience right okay and then check out these licenses make sure that you're getting the right one on this site as well okay because that's going to change things it's going to change the price all right but i believe you can always repurchase a new license as your show grows so if you don't want to change your show your, your show's song music and you just want to change uh like the amount of people who are actually listening to it, you can upgrade or buy a new license at a later date too. So if you're just getting started and you and you want to have it up to like a specific amount of downloads, then, you know, that's fine. That's fine to upgrade it and re-download a new license later. So have fun. If you have questions, feel free to reach out in our Facebook group and just excited to hear what you come up with. Have fun. It's how to set up a podcasting workflow. This is gonna be a place where you put all your brain dump ideas and you keep track of each episode and where they are in the process from idea all the way to when it's actually complete, scheduled in your podcast or like host and then also repurposed. So I'm gonna walk you through what my process looks like, but I wanna encourage you no matter where you're at in your podcasting journey to implement something like this because what that's going to do for you is make it so much easier when you're ready to bring on your podcast manager because you're going to have a seamless process for someone else to follow. Mm? This does not need to be done by you much longer. And so by implementing this process now and for you to get into a rhythm of actually using this, you're going to be able to outsource it much easier and much better moving forward. So let's dive in. I'll show you what that looks like. So we are in Asana right now. As you all probably know, I'm a big Asana fan. So I'd recommend if you haven't already done so, I will link Asana below this video. But we're gonna start by looking at the columns here, all right? So what I have is podcast processes. Once again, really, really helpful when you hire someone. This is gonna be used for all of the cards that are just gonna walk someone through where you find guests, where you want people to apply to be on your show, any of your podcast ideas. So let me walk you through some of mine and then we'll move on to the next column. So under podcast processes for myself, I have hot podcast ideas. This is a running list of things. So when they come to mind, like, oh, I want to create a graphic for the side of my car that has my podcast on it. Boom. I added in hot podcast ideas. Or it'd be really cool to have a shirt that has my podcast information so when I'm working out at the gym, someone can see that and start listening right there on the spot. Boom. Add in the hot podcast ideas. So that way when you're ready and you're like, mm, I'm looking for a fun little project, you can go right into hot podcast ideas and you can pull something and implement. It's all in one place. So I have guests on my show. So these are this is like our process for bringing a guest on our show. And I'll walk you through exactly what that looks like in a separate video. But we have a thread for this. So me and my podcast manager both understand the process for how we bring a guest onto our show. That information is all here within Asana. Then we have shows to apply for. These are shows that either I or her have said, okay, these shows have our ideal listeners. We should go after them and work to get on the show, right? Our goal is to get on one per week. So we have a list here, a running list that we're constantly updating. And the cool thing is inside, let's say this is this one, shows to apply for. 
inside what we do is we add a subtask. So like aligned with purpose in life and leadership, which is my podcast. So if this was for you, maybe you have my podcast listed and inside the notes, you can put my email, you could put the message you're going to send, huh? Right? So then you get a process down for not just the shows you're looking to apply for, but what you're going to say to them and who you're going to say it to. And you can even put a date as to when you want this to be finished by. So for right now, this is going to keep you organized. But then when you bring someone else on, they know exactly what you're doing here. Hmm? Those wheels starting to turn yet? Okay, so that's how this works. And then I have right here Jamie to go after high level shows because there's some shows that are very, very, very popular. And I want to make sure that I'm reaching out to them in the form of like a voice note or a video or something. I just I don't want to reach out to them in the form of like an email like I would for some other shows. So we just have a different process for that. So that's all we have there. Processes to keep us all on the same page. And then the next column over is brain dump ideas. This column is for like, let's say you're on a walk and then boom, an idea lands. You can pull up the Asana app on your phone and just type it right in your board. That way you don't have notes all over the place in your notebook, in your notes on your phone, in your email. Like I used to email myself when I had ideas, no joke. I would email myself. In like, if your inbox is anything like mine, there's so many emails. And so I would never get back to the idea. Or I would be like, what was this even for? And I would just forget. And so the idea would be like lost. And so now I put everything into the brain dump ideas section. So when I go to sit down, I just finished two podcast episodes. All I did was I just drug it over to here. And I knew that was the episode that I was going to film. Right? That's how that worked. So I've actually broken down exactly what an episode template should look like. And I'm going to walk you through that now because there's a process for when you actually go through to film the episode. Okay, so I have an episode template that you should create for yourself. And it might look a lot, a little or a lot different than mine, but the idea remains create an episode template that you can just duplicate and you do that by doing this duplicate task so today's episode right and then it shows up here's how this looks this is great for when you hire someone you'd put the episode title here any notes that you have so maybe you type out a bullet type script and you use google docs you would copy the url and paste it here you could have a podcast description, LinkedIn post description, YouTube description. We actually are kind of minimizing this right now to just description. And we just kind of tailor the one for all these different platforms rather than writing out three separate ones. So you'll have title, notes, description. That's, it's that simple. Then it's just a checklist. So I know I need to film, record a teaser for Instagram, do or don't need to do that. Take a photo for the thumbnail if you're doing video for YouTube. Edit video, pull audio, right? So you, you or your team could checklist this as you're going through the process so that you know where the other person is on the creative journey. Okay, and then we've got video instructions, audio instructions, and then if there's a guest, we have the information here for marketing materials, which I'm not going to walk you through right now because we're gonna go over that in the guest episode, right? But this is how this can look for you. And now I'll open this up if you wanna see what this looks like. So for video instructions, we have a list of things to do here, which includes content repurposing, which my team does, right? Or audio instructions as well. Okay, so we know it needs to be turned into a blog, pull a quote, create a carousel. So these are all the things that we know are on the checklist to complete for each episode. What I would do on this creative process is if we're about to film, like let's say we want to film this episode today and this episode today. I'm going to move them across on the board so I have clarity on where I'm going to show up and what I'm going to film today. Okay, 
So we would know, which this I just created as an example, so let me delete that. So we would know that we're going to film today's episode and we're going to film imagine living in a world with everyone connected to their purpose. So I've got my brain centered around where I'm going to show up today, okay? I do the same thing when I have guests coming onto the show and I put their information here, okay? So I would put the guest name, their contact information, all of that within this template here. Same exact template as before, okay? So through the creative process, let's say I just finished filming this episode. I'm going to mark that as complete. Boom, boom, boom. And then I'm going to move it to the edit section. Maybe. And at this point is when I would tag my podcast manager or you would edit it on your own and you'd set the due date, which I like to do the due date as the day the episode goes live. That way we just know exactly when it's like due to be finished. So that's how that part works. And then from there, we go into schedule and repurpose. So my podcast manager or yourself would realize, okay, this episode has been edited. It's ready to be scheduled into my podcast host and the content is ready to be repurposed all over social media. Think of your podcast as the first and quite frankly, the only piece of content that you really have to create because you can repurpose that in so many different ways. We're going to talk about that in a separate video, but this is a great way to keep track of all the content that you've created within the same episode. Like you'll see right here, this is from episode 107, negative feedback. And we have our quote here. Why or we are not for everyone. Not everyone is going to agree with the way you decide to do things. And so we have all of our graphics Right. This is a from the expert series, The Secrets of a Badass Confidence Coach with Luke Anning. And so we've got the graphic here for Luke. We also have a link to the video here for Luke. We have everything within the one card for each episode. So we know that we need to repurpose it. It doesn't just like go into random folders on all over your computer. It's like in one place linking to those other places. Okay. It's I promise you just And then once you're finished, once you've done everything that you want to do with that episode, move it over to complete, mark it finished. And then you can just kind of like, it's off your plate at that point. So pro tip, watch this video on 2x speed in order to save yourself some time. And if you've had any value from this program thus far, head over to testimonial.to slash Jamie. You can leave a testimonial and win special prizes. So if you head over to our wall of love, you can see an example of some of the prizes that we've done in the past. So we give away these podcast launch plaques, which are super fun. You can see some of our previous clients here. So would love for you to be in the running for a podcast launch pack of your own. They're super awesome. Here, I have mine. What you can win. So leave a testimonial, win special prizes. I can't wait to hear from you. It means the absolute world when I do. So testimonial.to slash Jamie. And make sure you join Unbound CEO's Academy where you're going to have access to the entire program that I've mentioned here. You'll have everything in a step-by-step video by video way where there's links to the resources, there's worksheets, there's guides, there's trainings. And also you'll have access to an entire community full of people going through this experience alongside you. So you're no longer alone in this. So come inside, come join us, get coached by industry leading experts, have access to our podcast before it drops publicly and YouTube videos just like this before they're available to the public. So join us inside. There's over $10,000 worth of programs, coaching, courses, all the things. Can't wait to see you inside and keep going. You've got this. Okay. So just to clarify, set up your Asana board, brain dump some ideas, and then time block some space in your schedule to actually go through the creative process and take those episodes from just an idea to fully complete and scheduled out. All right. Happy podcasting of AI and how you can use chat GPT to help you outline your podcast episodes. That's just going to make it really easy to just flow and get into a good riff. So I know inside of this lesson, I actually do provide you with an outline that you can use specifically for your episodes. But if you want one specifically tailored to the content that you're going to be speaking about, this is another way that you can go ahead and you can do that. So one thing that you can do, let's say that we're going to have an episode on how to create a podcast. Okay, let's do this. Please create an outline for a podcast 
episode that talks about the benefits. So you would have a topic of launching a podcast to generate leads for your business. I like to hook the audience and leave them with a call to action of leaving a rating and review on the show. So you could do something like this. Let's just see what it comes up with. It already came up with the title as well, which is cool. How podcasting can help generate leads for your business. So it breaks it down into different sections. Introduction, section one, section two, section three, and then a conclusion. So really what this is going to help do is give you talking prompts. Now you could easily do this without chat GPT if you want to do more of like a manual way and, and do your own thing. But for the sake of this <laughs> lesson being about how to use AI to help you. Um, okay, so it's it'll give you detailed Welcome to the podcast and introduce the topic. Briefly explain what lead generation is and why it's important. Share some t statistics about the effectiveness as podcasting as a lead generation tool. Okay, the benefits of podcasting, how to create a podcast for lead gen, promoting your podcast. Okay, and then the conclusion. And then if you'd like, you can say, please provide two, whoa, two creative name ideas that are SEO friendly along with a description for the above podcast episode using the tonality of Jamie Coleman. You can put your name of aligned with purpose, whoa, in life and leadership. Ensure you use ways of creating the most effective for SEO purposes. Okay, so look at now we've got a few name ideas and we've got a description for your episode, which is cool. So you'll say, so the name idea one, purposeful podcasting, the ultimate guide to generate leads for your business. In this podcast, we dive deep into the world of podcasting and explore it. Like, look at this is great. So it, it shares your name. <laughs> uh, it's so, so cool, right? So that's a really simple way that you can look, you just created the outline for your entire show. You've got the title and you've got this description right here. Obviously, I would recommend like go back through this description and make it yours, like shake up, make, make sure that it sounds like your voice, right? Take these and like riff, like use these just as simple talking points to just keep you focused and make sure your episode is really, really well-rounded. I like to look at these tips and these bullet points and then just allow myself to just flow. And then whenever I feel a complete answering that question, you kind of bring it back full circle and then you move on to the next thing. Okay, so how I would do this is I would do the introduction and then I would say, cool, now I really want to talk about like the benefits of podcasting specifically for lead generation. So then it literally gives me a prompt. Then I would discuss the benefits of podcasting for business. Like you could actually go through and you could like, if it, I would highlight all of this, copy it and paste it into a Word document. And you could actually like bullet out right here in your Word document, the actual things that you want to discuss, right? And have like a bullet, bullet, bullet. So like gaining trust in it that at credibility, establishing yourself as the expert, reaching a wider audience, then you can expand on each one of those topics as much as you would like until you feel like this episode's at a good place, right? So I kind of use like a bullet point structure like this to keep you focused, but then you can riff as far as you want and then just bring it back. This outline really just helps you bring it back <laughs> so that your episode makes sense and is well-rounded for the listeners so that they don't get like lost. You're not like over in la-la land. It's like, but we keep bringing it back to the point of the episode so that they're following this process that leads to a really seamless episode. Okay, um, cool. And yeah, then you have a conclusion where you can provide a clear call to action and thank the listeners and asking them to subscribe, right? So it's just really good outline and it's provided by ChatGPT. So have some fun, play around with this. Go ahead and get your few episode ideas going, right? What I like to do is you're gonna have access to this. I'm gonna start a new one here. You'll have access to this podcasting template that I've created for you. And what you could do is copy all of this, right? And you could always paste it right here into the body of your episode. And this is where you could expand on those topics, like I said. So like right here, you could put um, like choosing a topic, right? Selecting a format, setting up equipment, right? You Then you just kind of turn it into you know, 
more of a, a of a thorough outline that's going to help guide you as you're speaking. Okay. Um, remember too that uh, it's really just a resource. It's just a resource to keep you focused, just in case you forget where you're at in, in the episode, which can happen. Okay. So have some fun with ChatGPT. Allow it to help you uh, move more efficiently and get your message out to more people with ease. Have some fun. Okay. See you in the next one part of creating your cover art. So I will walk you through some examples. I do design cover art. So that's something that I have fun putting together myself. So I'll show you a few clients that I've created cover art for and really the mindset behind that. So here is Matt's cover art and I'll also show you a walkthrough of how we're using this cover art to create teaser graphics. Um, but really what this started as was a picture of Matt with a black background. So it was super easy to just crop out the background in place him on a solid black background here because I really thought that was like a vibe. So when it comes to cover art, what I recommend that you do first, if you haven't already, is go through the Apple Apple or Spotify, wherever you want to go in your category and just start to see what people are doing for cover art there and what catches your attention and what feels like the vibe and the branding that matches you and your show. Okay. And then what I would do is start to screenshot those and almost create like a mood board for what your podcast cover art could and should look like. That's a really good place to start. So I already kind of know like the vibe that I like, which is always like the person's face really close and then big, easy to read letters that look super professional and on brand. So um, for Matt, yeah, that's what we rolled with. And I've got his like branding and his colors and everything like that here. So it made it super easy to just know the direction that we were going. Um, I really like doing a type of, you know, like border. I always think that that looks pretty cool, uh, especially, especially on the feed on Apple. So I, I added this border here really simply. He, and then let me see, why is it doing that? Oh, this is a different border. Okay, I was like, why is it covering him? So I actually cropped him out and then pulled him in front of the background, which I thought was pretty cool. It just adds like a little bit. I know it's like a nuanced, little teeny tiny detail, but those details go a long way. Uh, and then I did work with one of his graphic designers and she gave me this little element here that had his branding fonts because I didn't have access to those yet. So she gave me this portion to add, but everything else uh, I created in this um, cover art here got his little logo down here and I just think it looks really professional the cool thing that you can try is like zoom out a lot <laughs> and see what it would look like on the feed so I will say like this screen that I'm using here is like pixelated a little bit it's not like the best quality so I know that on my other screen this will look good so uh, you can always test it that way to see it small but yeah so that was kind of the mindset behind this one I will show you mine currently is this. I say currently because I like to change it a lot. I did the same thing with me. Uh, I cr actually cropped me out of this photo and then I duplicated it and I put me on top of the other photo. And the reason that I did that is because I wanted to be pulled out so that this could go behind me and look really cool. So once again, like that little tiny detail, but I think it just looks super epic. So <laughs> that's what I decided to do there. And uh, let's see, added a border once again, and then some brand colors, fonts. And then I, I started to add in little things like this, like light flares, because I thought that looked pretty sick in the background as well. So you'll kind of get a feel for my style after looking at a few of these. But keyword is like on brand, looks good when it's like zoomed out. You can still see like the text and all the things there. So there is my cover art. Who knows? I might change it soon. I have fun like changing cover arts all the time. So um, here's another example. This is a Mar. Uh, this was a collab as well between me and one other person. And this is actually like a really zoomed in image because I didn't have his cover art saved. So if it's not as great a quality, that's why. Um, but Amar was actually leaning up against a building in this photo. So the other designer, what she did was actually pulled him from that design and then photoshopped him onto this road, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and so the two of us collaborated to just make sure that this was on brand and looking really cool for the cover art. So the Leader's Life podcast with Amar. <laughs> okay. Um, Breeze, I created by myself. Once again, you'll see that we have a slate border here. Bree was actually on like a white wall, I think up against a table. So what I did was actually cropped Bree out of that photo. Okay, see, it's just her. So I removed her from her background and 
I added her into like a new scene that looked more on brand. It looked more professional and I just really liked that. So I put white behind these letters to make the text really pop. Uh, and then we've got with Brie there. And this one passes the test of when you make it smaller, it still looks really cool. So that is her cover art. Uh, and then I've got one more to show you, which is Natalie. Natalie's photo looked like this. <laughs> I mean, she had a professional photo shoot done. So it was it was really incredible to be able to work with this. So I was able to pull her branding information and I created the Mind Body Freedom podcast with Natalie Spaeth. Um, was able to create a frame and kind of pull in her name that way. That way it wasn't just floating there. And we added a bit of, you know, like shading in the background here to make the words really pop. But this one definitely, you know, when zoomed out, you can see Mind Body Freedom and she looks like a freaking angel. So those are just a few ideas of what you can do for your cover art. You can do the same thing that you would do for any other graphics here. You could look for even podcast cover art here. And uh, I'm not sure I really like any of those, to be honest. Okay, this is kind of cool with like the guy's face. Let me, let me just pull this up here. This is kind of cool. Okay, so you could remove your face. Oh, look at that. This is sick. I would totally do this. Oh my gosh, I want to use this one. I love this. Okay, someone's going to snag it now that I have a video about it. But you can go over here and just see, like, is there anything that's already created that you like? And then how can you make it your own, right? Super cool. Like, this could also be a cool one for Matt, right? Like, this could be a really cool. Just look for a vibe that you like. Make it yours. Make it on brand. And kind of roll from there. Uh feel free to share it with us in the group as well as you start to come up with things. But I would start with your cover art because then from there you can use your cover art and your launch graphics and your teaser graphics, all the things like that um, as you're creating. So have fun with this. You can always hire someone on Fiverr if you would like to you know, not do this yourself or you could talk to us if you're interested in having me help you with this. Uh, no worries at all, just let us know. Uh, but have fun. Have fun. And then let's see to one more thing. Make sure your size, if you're doing it in Canva, is 1400 by 1400 because that is what is needed for the podcast hosts. So enjoy. Have fun with this. <laughs> well, I am going to walk you through how to make some graphics for your launch of your podcast. So I was already making these and then I was like, hold on, let me just click on the camera and just do some live with you so that you can see how I do this process. So uh, this is one of my clients, Matt. And so we are launching his podcast soon. Um, I've already created this one, which I believe is going to be the very first one that's going to launch to the world, right? This is going to be where he tells people about his podcast. So I recommend you put your cover art. So you want to have your cover art already done before you do this. So put your cover art down in the corner so that people are like, oh, that looks freaking awesome, right? Uh, and new podcast alert coming soon. And then your name, put a cool podcast graphic, whatever you want to do to build the hype. Or if you're still in the design phase of your cover art, one thing that's super cool is to involve your audience. So you could have like option A or option B and ask them, I have a new podcast dropping. What cover art do you like the best? So there you can see mine. Then underneath here, once again, we have his cover art showing what to expect that this graphic was super cool for just showing his excitement and then this is his tagline it's, um at least for now this might change standing at the intersection of business and faith so starting from scratch what we're going to do is go to design and then you can type in like new podcast or launch let's actually do that let's do launch okay then i'm really just looking for one that is a vibe that's really what I'm looking for. Um, you could, ooh, this would be a cool one. So unfortunately, I don't have a graphic of what it's going to look like on the feed or else I would totally use that here. It'd be so much better. So I won't be able to use that bit. Oh, and then this doesn't really feel on brand, but I can roll with that vibe. And I'm going to go to, um, where am I going to go? These elements. Okay. And let me do like a desk flat lay. So I think this would be cool in the background. And then I'm going to look for something that's on brand with him. So if you see, these are, this is like his brand, which you should already have put together. So I have like his brand fonts. I have his colors, all of that in one place. And so I already have a feel for his vibe. It's like, this is kind of cool. Almost like. 
I kind of just now just drag and drop and see what makes sense. Sometimes it's cool to do desk flat lay with microphone or headphones. Like you can just, just try to type stuff in. Ooh, this is cool. Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to lower the transparency because I don't want it to be like too aggressive. <laughs> okay. Coming soon. I'm going to use open sans. Hold it. New podcast. Also, make sure the colors are the same. Also, Kylo's joining me today, so he's down here chilling. Same thing. You're going to go through and you want to make sure all the fonts are correct. I kind of start there. Boop. 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 Okay. And then... Okay. So then I'm going to do like zero, seven days, seven days, two, let's do like, let's do like seven days and 12 hours, 12 hours and okay. So then we have certain success.com. Okay, we've got the timing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make this his brand colors, which we should already have in this document from above or pull it up. What you can do is you could actually pull up your color sheet, click on this color guy, and then you're just gonna copy that code. But I don't need to do that because we already have it right here. Uh, if this is your Canva and you have Canva Pro, make sure you have your brand kit here. That's just gonna make your life easier. Okay, change all these beautiful colors. Okay, day, hour, minutes. Okay, and then what I would like to do is if this podcast was already live, what I would do is I was actually gonna go into, say, Spotify or Apple Podcasts. You can pull up the actual episode, screenshot the photo with your phone, send that to your computer, and then you can actually drag and drop it here so it's actually gonna look like it came from your phone. That is how you can do that. But I'm gonna actually just do this and put like a picture of his face here. Because I think that still is like kind of cool. It's like also pretty mysterious, which I like. Yeah, so I actually like how this looks. This is really how I want this, to be honest. Like I think that looks, it looks on brand. All these go together. They look high quality. Yeah, I mean, I like that. Okay, so then if we want to do another one, I recommend uh, creating enough because you really want to be promoting your episode at least two weeks before it goes out your podcast. I mean, you can do more if you want, but minimum two weeks. So I would get at least a few pieces of content going, just really building that hype. Or you could do this. Um, you can make it about like, we're accepting guests. Like, do you want to apply for our show? Which is pretty cool. Like you could do a guest invite as well. Um, oh, look at this one. This one really looks like this vibe. So I'm actually going to roll with it and I'm going to find another picture of Matt. Also, I did talk to him about me being able to share this stuff with you guys just so you know. So, <laughs> ooh, this one's cool. And he's pointing up. Look at this. So if you don't have photos already, take do a photo shoot, like set aside a day, pick out some outfits, make it high quality. This is your brand. So put a effort into it. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to download this photo. And we're going to actually upload it. Okay. Edit photo. This is how you remove the background. Which I hope it works well. This part's super dark down here. So I hope it's going to work well. So obviously you don't want that green. Hello. Ugh. It's not going to be good. While that's loading. Because this has to fully upload or else it's just like not going to work. So while that's happening, I'm just going to do some adjusting here on my end. We're going to roll with this color. So just kind of editing everything in terms of colors, in terms of brands. Okay. So Okay. Actually, let's do this. I'm actually going to pull 
this. I like this one. So all I'm doing is copying that and then I'm just going to paste that here so that it's like super branded. See that? And then I want it to be aligned this way. I think that looks good. So you're really just kind of basing this off of what you think looks good. <laughs> Kylo is very excited about this. Can you hear him? Okay. And then I like to make some edits. Like obviously, um, you don't want this to look like stock. You know what I mean? Like you want this to look like you put a lot of effort into it and you did, right? So you want it to like resemble your brand and your vibe what you're trying to create here, right? <laughs> Kylo got a new set of toys from the library and so he's going crazy playing with them now. Okay, so what you see what I did, edit photo and then background remover, click it, let it do it, let it do its thing, and then we'll see what the final product actually looks like. Okay, so like that. And then we want to make sure that this, see how it's on top of his body? Look at little things like that. Please don't not do that. Okay. <laughs> it's really important. Uh, okay. Oh, we might have to move him and like make this background look good. And if you didn't like those things in the back, you could definitely erase them. I think they're actually pretty cool. Your host. Once again, make sure the fonts are good. Okay, and then so I'm gonna do branded here too. This um let's go back to here. I'm gonna do actually this gray color, which is right here. White. Okay, I think that looks cool. It's too close to I think this looks cool. I'm trying to look at it and just see what I think could be missing. I think it's missing this. Like I almost want to see the, the art again because we're really emphasizing. We're really emphasizing like the podcast. I don't know if I like that. See, here's what I wish I had, and I don't have this handy, is just the the logo from the podcast, because I would actually put that here. Let's do this, certainsuccess.com. Maybe that's what's throwing me off. I think it's just like too big. I don't know, so play around with it. Use your eye. Like you or I for this. Okay. Which, yeah, I think four is, is good enough because then what you're going to want to do is you're kind of going to want to kind of switch gears and create content for your launch episodes. So you'll, you'll launch with a teaser and then three, three body core episodes. So you could start to create actual content for that instead uh, so that you have that going and you're not behind, so to speak, and you can go and you can schedule those out. So that's what I would really recommend you do is start to create your graphics, start to share them with your audience, boost your engagement, share them in Facebook groups with your ideal listeners and your audience. Just start to go crazy. <laughs> start to go crazy promoting this. Uh, one of my mentors, Rob Dial, he hosts like one of the number one motivation podcasts in the world. And he said that for the first like three years of his podcast, every single Friday, he would set aside like five hours and all he would do is promote his podcast show into different Facebook groups. So Understand that this is so important to do to build the hype because your audience might not find you at first So you have to find them and you have to show them your show and put your show in front of them. Okay, so mm, Also, we will be your first listeners and your first people to be raving fans of your show. So please share it with us. Thank you <laughs> Kylo, whoa how to do simple edits for your podcast episode inside of GarageBand. So right here, if you already have your episode recorded, uh, these things don't really matter to be honest, so long as you can hear the sound where you're recording. 
Uh, if you are filming with a microphone, you would click this little arrow here and you're going to make sure that you select um, from right here where it says microphone, you want to make sure that you select your audio device and your microphone here. And then if you're wearing a headset or something, you're going to select that there, but I am not. So I'm just going to roll with this. You press create and then you're going to want one audio for the body and you're going to want another audio for music. Okay. Granted, this is a very, um, very simple edit that I'm going to show you because I don't think it needs to be fancy, to be honest, especially when you're get, just getting started. For my first like 100 episodes, this is how I edited my podcast. Okay. <laughs> Nothing fancy. All right. So now what you want to do uh, is uh, you want to start with this show music up front. So how I will do this is I'm just going to like mute that so I can't hear it. And you want to go to mix show automation and i like to drop this down if you see where it says db i like to drop it down to like negative 16 so it's not like super loud um and then here we'll just start to listen and then i usually like his voice to come in like right here so what you can do when you put those little check marks is you can then move how much you're actually hearing down here right so then I want him to begin talking let's see how this sounds welcome to the leader's life yeah. podcast where just like that so I kind of want it to fade naturally behind his voice and then when he's introducing this episode I like to have it around 32 uh, db down here that way um it's still kind of going on in the background that's where you implement that old school grind with that new school mind what is up fam i'm your host amar and before we get started please make sure you hit on that subscribe button so you never ever miss out and also if you have not done so please leave a five-star review because that helps people find this podcast organically with that being said let's jump to today's topic which is being a better communicator in your life and work field Okay, so then he kind of stops talking here for a little bit. I don't normally make it super tight together, but I think like that's a pretty big pause. So. And we're field. Just this morning. Okay, so then at this point, I would want... With that being said, let's jump into today's topic, which is being a better communicator in your life and work field. Okay, so let's just tighten this up here. Just this morning. Okay, so now the music has stopped because he's done introducing the podcast. So if we want to remove that tail end, you can. Or sometimes I'll actually take that tail end and I'll just move it uh, at the end of the podcast to the very end. I had a call scheduled with one of my business partners, RJ, out on the West Coast. He lives in California and I live in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, which is the East Coast. So we had a call scheduled for 1030 a.m. However, we did not disclose whether or not it was 10 a.m. Eastern time or 10 a.m. Pacific time. And both of us, of course, miscommunicated and we ended up having to reschedule this important meeting, which is why I wanted to talk today about communication in your relationships and your work field and see if you get kind of the same so situation right or miscommunication is really just listening for any times that maybe there was a mistake and I'm listening for audio quality and I'm just trying to see like, where is this episode at? Communicate the way RJ and I did this morning. First off, let's be honest about communication. It is the most important part of our lives and plays such a crucial role in our personal and professional growth. Whether it's a conversation with a friend, meeting at work or presentation in front of an audience, effective communication can help us convey our message, build relationships, and most importantly, achieve our goal. Also, I will say typically our podcast production team handles this uh, and they use fancier software, fancier tech, but um, for the sake of this training, I'm using uh, GarageBand because I know that's the most accessible thing and it also provides good quality. Like I said, this is how when I did not have a team, I was editing all my episodes. So just wanted to put that out there. However, Poor communication can have a profoundly negative impact on relationship and work. Let me give you a few examples of poor communication in your relationship with your husband, with your wife, with your girlfriend, with your boyfriend, with your parents, with anything in your relationships in your life. Stonewalling. 
What is stonewalling? Stonewalling is when one partner shuts down and stops communication in a conversation. This can be frustrating and hurtful experience for the other partner who obviously feels dismissed and unheard. This is an example that's very, very common in relationships where the spouse, one of the spouses just shuts down in the middle of the argument, in the middle of the disagreement, in the middle of the conversation and just freezes. Do you stonewall and just stop in the middle of the conversation when you guys are communicating, opening up and expressing yourselves and all of a sudden you hear something and then you just shut down and stop communicating? Another example of poor communication. Okay, so you kind of heard those clicks inside of here. So you can zoom in. I'm just using my trackpad right now to kind of like pinch. And I heard some clicks in here. Stop communicating. Okay, cool. So I want to make sure that those are removed. So what you can do is you can press Command and then T. And that's going to cut the track. So you're just going to want to go to wherever there is a mistake cut the track then you can just pull this drag it and drop it over here and stop communicating another example of see so now it's gone people of poor communication in your relationships is criticizing versus complaining what do i mean by that criticizing is when someone attacks their partner's character whereas complaining is where someone expresses a problem with their partner's behavior Criticizing can lead to defensiveness and resistance, whereas complaining can lead to constructive problem solving. Does that resonate with you? Do you feel that your character is attacked? You are being stupid. You are not understanding what I'm saying. What is wrong with you? Those are just examples of being criticizing versus actually trying to figure out and fix the situation by name calling. Stop that shit. That's just an example of poor communication. What about mind reading in a relationship where you actually think that they know what you are thinking or feeling with actually saying with them may definitely lead to misunderstanding and miscommunication and most likely an argument and fight. That's why it's so important to communicate directly and ask clarification when needed. Listen, been there firsthand with my wife where she thought I knew what she was saying and wanted to get certain things done obviously i was not a mind reader i should have known the infamous infamous i should have known but at the end of the day it wasn't communicated therefore how am i supposed to know exactly what it is that needs to be done how are you supposed to know exactly what needs to be done if it's not communicated or if you need something to be done and you expect somebody to just know your husband your partner that's also terrible. Try to just communicate to get that clarity in your relationship to most importantly strengthen it. And being a better communicator in a relationship is seriously the secret to having a successful relationship. If I triggered you, it's okay. Those are just a few examples of poor communication in your relationship. But let's just remember that effective communication is essential for a healthy relationship and successful for work environments as well. You have to be a good communicator in your personal life and your work in your workspace. So by being mindful of common communication pitfalls and practicing open and direct communication, you can foster deeper connections and work more efficiently and effectively. Okay, see it happened again here. So let's command T. Command T, delete, let's slide this over. But Amar, how do I do that? Don't worry, I have tips on how to be an effective communicator in your personal life and your workspace. My first tip on how to be an effective communicator My first tip on how to be an effective communicator is don't talk over people. Yes, this is a big one. Interrupting or talking over others while they are speaking is a surefire way to be a terrible communicator. First off, it shows lack of respect and consideration for the other person's thoughts and opinions. So do yourself a favor. If they're talking and you're getting antsy and you wanna interrupt and you wanna say something, be patient listen make sure they're being heard and then you're able to speak but by able to just jumping in and just 
talking over them as they're expressing or as they're talking is not gonna resolve anything other than more anger and more issues with communication. My next tip on how to be an effective communicator is stop being dismissive. Yes, brushing off someone's concerns or dismissing their ideas without giving them proper consideration is another way of being a terrible communicator. Yes, terrible communicator. This behavior can make the other person feel very undervalued and most importantly, unimportant. Stop brushing off somebody's feelings. If they feel a certain way, they feel a certain way. You can't talk somebody out of their feelings. So don't try to control their feelings by being dismissive and ignoring it and saying, no, you're exaggerating. No, that's not true. Listen and understand that they feel that way for a reason. My next tip on how to be an effective communicator is stop being in. It's a little quick in here. My reason. My next tip on how to be an effective communicator is stop being vague. I can't stand this. Being vague or unclear to your communication can lead to miss understanding and frustration for both parties. It is extremely essential to be as specific and direct as possible when communicating important information. Listen, if you need to get something done, let's just say you want to get a package mailed UPS overnight. That's just an example. Do you just give your secretary the package and say, hey, can you just mail this? Or do you say, hey, I need this to be mailed right away overnight. Please, it has to be there by tomorrow. That's just an example of, hey, being vague versus being clear. Stop being vague. If you want something done correctly, communicate it correctly and effectively. And most importantly, don't be vague. My next tip. My My next tip on how to be an effective communicator is by stop not listening. Yes, failing to actively listen to what others have to say is such a significant barrier to effective communication. To be a good communicator, you have to be able to listen actively, respond appropriately, and provide feedback to ensure that you understand what the other person is saying. Listen, I've been guilty of this as well, waiting to say something that triggered me in a conversation or a little disagreement with my wife, and I totally disregarded what she was saying because I was just ready to speak. I was not listening to her. Do you do the same thing when you're in a disagreement or an argument or at work? You feel that you're being wrongly accused of something and you're just not listening to what they're saying because you want to defend yourself. Just listen, let them let them speak, let them get out of the, let them get their excommunication out of the way so then you can communicate and therefore by you listening, you're able to express yourself after because the worst feeling in the world is to feel unheard. My next tip on how to be an effective communicator. Okay. So I liked something in here and I think it could be a good quote. So I'm just trying to see. By you listening, you're able to express yourself after because the worst feeling in the world is to feel unheard. Yeah. My next tip on how to be an effective communicator in your life is stop using aggressive language. Yes, I'll say it again. Stop using aggressive language because using aggressive or confrontational language can be intimidating and off-putting to others, making it difficult for them to engage in meaningful conversations. Yes, I'll say it again. Difficult for them to engage in meaningful conversations by you using aggressive language. Don't, don't disrespect your loved ones because of a miscommunication or you want to get your point across. It is so important to not curse, flip your shit and not communicate because you are angry. And because you're angry, you are cursing, name calling, just being aggressive. That is not going to be an effective communication. So please stop using that aggressive language. And my last tip. Training you, okay? you Language. Mommy said she wants to teach you and, first. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so scooch this here. And my last tip on how to communicate effectively in your life is stop avoiding difficult conversations. Yes, because avoiding difficult conversations or topics that need to be addressed will lead to long-term problems and misunderstandings. It is so important to be willing to have these conversations, even if they're uncomfortable, which most difficult conversations are, to create an environment of open and honest communication. Listen, there's going to be many times in your marriage, in your boy, boyfriend, girlfriend relationships, whether with your parents, where you're going to have to have that tough talk, that difficult conversation, getting stuff off your chest. Stop avoiding those conversations because what happens is they end up getting built bigger and bigger in your head when you avoid having them and you end up just blowing up one day because you have not expressed yourself because you kept on avoiding this difficult conversation that has been obsessing in your head, in your mind, throughout your day. So stop avoiding those difficult conversations and address the elephant in the room. I promise you, your relationship will strengthen because of it. I hope these... strengthened because of it. I hope these tips have given you some useful insights to become a more effective communicator because effective communication is the most valuable skill that can. Okay, so since he started talking again here, you can kind of tell he's closing out the episode. So I'm going to do this. I hope these tips have given you some useful insights to become a more effective communicator because effective communication and I'll actually probably scooch this a little bit more than because of it. I hope these tips have given you some useful insights to become a more effective communicator because effective communication is the most valuable skill that can help you achieve your personal and professional goals, I promise you. With that being said, remember, the most important thing in communication is to hear what isn't being said. And that's that. Thank you so much for showing up and listening. Please make sure you click on that subscribe button so you never, ever miss out. And share this with your family, friends, and tribes on Instagram. Tag me at Leaders Life Podcast. You all freaking rock. Remember, why not you? Why not now? Hope you have an amazing, amazing rest of your day. Cool. So that completes literally the tutorial of how I edited my first a lot of episodes <laughs> when I was originally mom's freedom maker uh, before I had a team helping with this kind of thing so you know if I'm ever in a pinch and if I ever need to edit an episode this is definitely uh, how I would do that so then from here uh, what you would do like I liked his audio quality if you don't like yours uh, definitely mess with your mic first because that's going to save you in post but you can mess with some of these settings down here just play around see see what it is that you like okay you can also add some filters on the voice too. Uh, I've never really liked that. I don't think it sounds very natural, at least on my voice or any of my clients' voices. I just haven't liked it, um, but maybe you will. Maybe it'll make your voice sound super cool or you could use like a robot or something and just freak people out. Uh, but when you're ready to download, you're gonna go up here to, where is it? Share, I was, I was right here. So you're gonna hit share and then you're gonna press export song to disc. Okay, and then So I put episode 52, so I'm just gonna save it to the desktop. You can do it as an MP3 or a WAV file typically. You can choose the quality. I would just do high quality or highest quality, depends on what you're vibing with. Press export. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a track on your desktop that is edited. And then from there, what you can do is you can drag and drop that track into your host provider and you are good to go. Have fun. All right, my friend, it is party time and I hope that you're getting excited because your launch is right around the corner. But I don't want you to miss this really crucial step because 
The first eight weeks after you hit publish and you're officially on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all the major podcast hubs, you wanna make sure that you hit the ground running with your show. So what that looks like is creating some buzz before you do that, okay? Look, I know it's easy to wanna hit, you wanna just hit publish, you wanna just put it out to the world, you wanna get the thing rolling, but movies don't do that. Think about that. If you're launching it, like these people did not film this movie for like multiple years just to put it out with no hype, right? You've got trailers, you've got budgets for ads, you've got like a lot of heat happening on social media and online before the movie actually comes out. Like think about Avatar. I knew that this latest Avatar movie was coming out years ago right? And they start putting out the trailers and they start building the hype, talking about it on social media, doing interviews, doing book tours, like all these things that you see people doing before the actual release of the thing. That's where you need to have your mind right now. You need to start building the buzz on your channels. So here's why. Here's why a launch party is really essential and really how you can make it a success. That's what we're going to be talking about in this, this lesson. So a launch party is super essential because it's going to build the buzz around your show and actually generate more excitement within your community for what's to come. So it's a, a really good chance for you to showcase your podcast and get people talking about it before it even exists. You can do this by putting out social media content and actually creating a specific event where you're hosting a party on Zoom where you're just going to let everybody know what to expect, why you're doing this, you know, what they can learn from you and your show, maybe tease some of the guests that are coming on. We've got to build the buzz. Okay, now I'm going to talk about a dramatic demonstration that one of my mentors has done at one point. So his name is Russell Brunson. You may or may not have heard of him. Now, he's a little crazy when it comes to marketing, but take his advice on this. So he spent like half a million dollars to create a YouTube video. Like, come on, literally a three minute video. He spent this much money to create, okay? And so when it was finished, right, they had just filmed this entire video, this whole entire three minute video. And the producers were like, okay, let's put this out to the world. And Russell was like, that doesn't really feel that dramatic. That doesn't really feel that exciting. I just spent a lot of money on this thing. It's got to work. We can't just put it out there and not have it work. It's got to work. So they did something crazy. They went and they rented out an entire football field, like the Smurf turf. And they rented like all these bubble uh, these bubbles to where they they had the biggest bubble soccer game that existed and they invited all of these YouTube influencers to come to this soccer field and like show up live and be posting on their feed so that when they launched this video, it went viral because everybody was there for it. Right? So think about that. That was to launch a single YouTube video and you're launching a podcast this is a whole entire stage that you're launching. Like, come on, let's get excited. Let's, let's have a party to launch this thing. So you've really got to be creating that buzz right now. Don't wait. Create it today. Right? Start doing this now. Especially if you're looking to launch in the next few weeks. This is really important to start doing. Okay? Uh, a launch party is also a really great way to actually get feedback Okay, it's an opportunity to get feedback from your listeners and your future listeners and make any necessarily any necessary tweaks to your show before the official launch. You could also show them your cover art, right? Get some feedback on your cover art, get some feedback on your description. Make sure that the name that you have for your episode so far would actually attract this audience to you and it's relatable to them. Maybe play your teaser episode for them to listen to. Okay, you can also offer and do a giveaway, right? To anybody who's going to listen and leave a rating and review on my show for the first eight weeks, I'm going to enter you into a drawing where you get a free coaching session with me. You get a free month of coaching. You get like whatever you want to give away. You get a Starbucks gift card. You get an Amazon gift card, whatever you want to do just to, to give back to your audience and build the hype. Okay. So you want to encourage downloads, ratings, and reviews in the first eight weeks. Okay. It is crucial that you do this because that's, what's going to show the algorithm that more people should see your show because people are liking it and it's gaining traction. So during the launch party, really work to encourage your guests to download, rate, and review your show. This is going to help increase your visibility and credibility, which can actually lead to more listeners in the long run. Okay, so I want to talk about now like how you can truly make your launch party a real success. So you've got to plan ahead. So start planning your launch party now. 
Uh, I would do it at least a month in advance, but uh, at least two weeks. So start building your hype, start planning your podcast launch party now. So that means if you do this today, you could launch your show in two weeks. If you want to really do crunch time, I mean, you can do less than that, but just hit the ground running. Show up in Facebook groups where your audience is hanging out. Start building this hype, right? Drive them to your event, drive them to your list. Okay, decide on the venue. I'd recommend Zoom, decide on the date and start putting together your guest list and getting them excited. Okay, once again, you can make it a success by creating buzz. Use social media and your platforms to start building buzz around your launch party. Okay, offer incentives like we mentioned. Incentivize them to download, rate and review your show, such as a discount code, freebie, giveaway, whatever you want to do, you can choose. I've given you a few ideas. Okay, engage with your guests during the party, really engage with them, ask for their feedback, okay, build relationships and a sense of community, okay, you could create if you want a separate Instagram account for your podcast, it's not something that I'm doing at the moment, because I'm focusing on growing one, but I've seen a lot of people want to do that, if they want to kind of keep their, their socials separate, that's up to you, you could create a Facebook group specifically for your podcast community, that would be a really cool thing to do. Uh, and follow up after the party. Make sure that you have a list of your guests that, that were there and that showed up. Thank them for coming. Encourage them to continue listening and engaging with your show. I think it's really great to do your launch party like the day you choose to hit publish on your show. So like you're building the hype and you're engaging with these people, but like the day you hit launch in your show, like you can go ahead and you can do your launch party. I hope that makes sense. So like you're building the hype, you're doing all the things, you're doing all the things, and then you're showing them first. Okay, because like usually what happens is Apple podcast is going to take a few days, it could take 24 hours. Okay, but it also could take like, I think they say 48 hours for you to actually get published. So if you needed to make any changes before like going live, so to speak, you could have your launch party right before you do that. Okay, cool. So really just to like wrap this up, a podcast launch party is a really great way to start to generate buzz and excitement around your show, like right as it launches. And then from there, the most important thing you can be doing for the first eight weeks is to, I would recommend getting minimum of 10 ratings and reviews per day. So it would look like family, friends, colleagues, significant other, like all your clients, your previous clients, like all your social media following, like driving them to your show, because if they don't know it exists, they're not going to find you. And in the beginning, you're kind of bootstrapping it a little bit. Okay, if you can get it new and noteworthy, that's where you can like, really get a massive audience from day one. Okay, uh, like my client Amar from the leaders life with Amar, we got him into the top 50 in Apple management category within the first few weeks of his show launch. Okay, that helped him launch a top like 5% of podcasts globally from the get go. And then like quickly ascended. Now he's top 2% globally. Okay, so it's really important that you do this. Like don't just launch your show and just expect it to take off. You've got to do some of the legwork. Okay, and that's where now like you've got to show up and you've got to take action in order for this to like actually happen. Okay. So plan the launch party, start to create that buzz, start talking about what you're going to start doing and build up your guest list for this launch party. Uh, Cause then you can hit the ground running and have a successful, truly successful launch of your podcast. Mm. Get those party poppers. Let's do this thing. So you should have a lot of clarity right now on the foundations of your podcast, on how to actually do the episode flow of your podcast, how you're going to make it flow seamlessly to not lose your audience, and we should be ready to launch, okay? But there are just some things that we need to sort out and make sure you have ready before you jump all in here. So we're going to start by talking about your launch team. So the first eight weeks of your show being live on Apple Podcast are the most crucial for it to grow fast, okay? Apple really favors new, new shows, and so if you can show Apple that you're getting downloads, ratings, and reviews consistently and frequently over the first eight weeks, oh my God, you could make it a goal to get into new and noteworthy or to get into the top 10 on Apple Podcasts. And if you can do this, when I say you're going to get hundreds of thousands of downloads per month, I mean it. So it should be a huge goal for you that for the first eight weeks of your podcast, like you are pretty committed to like promoting the hell out of your episodes. 
okay? So I'm gonna talk about a launch plan and what you could do in order to find success here. So let us dive in here. So what I would recommend is that you plan to get at least 10 reviews on your podcast every single day, at least for eight weeks. Okay, so we need to get a lot of reviews coming at you. All right, so prior to your episodes launching, I would really like to, you to get a launch team in place. So basically friends, family, colleagues, anyone who you can, who's gonna be ready to listen to your first couple of episodes, leave you a rating and review and share it on social media or share it with someone else who might need to listen to the show. Okay, so prep your launch team. So I want you to go through this worksheet that I have laid out for you. All right, so I have brain dump how you can plan to do your launch team. How are you gonna get 10 plus podcast ratings per day for eight weeks? Who can you reach out to? Okay, what will you give away? Are you gonna do a giveaway? Will you give away some free coaching, a gift card? Right, I'm giving away a gift card, coaching, and Apple AirPods. Okay, how many people do you need per day? Right, if you just reach out to 10, maybe five will actually do it. So how many people do you need to reach out to per day for this? How are you gonna keep track of who actually does it so that they're entered into your giveaway? Do you need to create graphics for this that you can po post all over social media? A messaging script, okay? The most important thing, and I can't stress this enough, is that after your episode goes live, you need to be promoting it all over social media, in Facebook groups, to your clients, to your friends, to your family. Just once your episode goes live, it needs to be promoted, okay? because you wanna get those downloads up. So think of how you can promote your episode. How can you turn this episode that you just did into pieces of content that you can put all over social media? A really good app for this is called Headliner. Headliner is where you can pull like 60 seconds of your audio, create a cool graphic and share it on Instagram and Facebook and all of that, and I do those all the time, okay? So think about how you can get your launch team squared up, fired up, ready to go. I included a message here that I used, or I use, I should say, because right now we just relaunched my podcast, so I'm doing this for the next eight weeks pretty heavy. So if someone like, so if we post a podcast graphic that says, hey, let's do a review for a review. Uh, I just relaunched my show. Would you mind checking it out? I'm doing a giveaway. Whatever that looks like for you. It says, hey, I appreciate the love of my podcast post. I'd love to ask if you'd be open to coming on my launch team for the show. I'm really looking to rise through the ranks to impact the lives of more people who come in contact with the content. Would you be opposed to helping me out? It should only take five to 10 minutes. Then I just put simple steps. Thanks for agreeing. Here's how it works. Step one, find my podcast. Step two, listen to the podcast. Step three, leave a rating and review. Step four, share it with someone who might enjoy it. And I let them know, I'm doing a giveaway. This is how you get entered to win. What do you think? So I let them again confirm that this sounds good, see if they have any questions. Once they say, sure, let's do it, then I say, can you touch base after you're finished and I'll enter you into the giveaway. So that's it. So take a message like this, make it your own, but this is basically how you're gonna get people to actually leave a rating and review. It is so important to do this. It is so important. So often I see people just film podcast episodes and they put them up and then they just, that's it. They just like, Boop, okay, I did it. I'm done. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You are missing out on a huge opportunity for growth by not promoting your episodes. So set aside a few hours a week to just promote your episodes. So I've also up here added a podcast launch checklist. So go through, make sure that you have clarity on all of these items. And I would also say like, you could actually write what the title is. So like right here, I'd put aligned with purpose in life and leadership, and then I would mark it complete. I would put my description here, 
ba -da, 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 da and then I would mark this complete. So that's how I would stay organized so it's all ended up in one place for you. So let me just erase this really quick. Cool, so that's how I would stay organized with all of this. And then I would even join right now five to 10 Facebook groups that have your ideal clients in them, have your ideal listeners or are for podcasters. I would join them here. That way when you're ready to start promoting not only your episodes, but your launch, you can have them somewhere that you know where to find them. Okay, so this is all about being organized. But downloads reviews, ratings. That is your focus for the next couple of weeks while your thing is getting pushed out there. Now, if you're listening to this and you're like, well, Jamie, I already have a podcast, but maybe your reviews aren't where you want it to be. Maybe you want to rebrand knowing what you know now. That's fine. If your brand spanking new and you just started your show before watching this, maybe you should consider kind of restarting. If you don't have any reviews, you don't have many listeners, maybe you should restart and take advantage of the, a brand new podcast on Apple and hit it really hard for eight weeks. That's what I would recommend. But if you've got a show that's doing pretty good, you've got some ratings, you've got some reviews, then maybe just re like moving forward, just start promoting your episodes more all over social media because that will help you grow really fast. All right, so my show's made it into the top one and a half percent. I will pull it up right now for you. Here's my pot party popper emoji. So I'll show you where you can find your show. So here's mine, Aligned with Purpose in Life and Leadership. This is on Listen Notes. They're very accredited in the podcasting world. And you'll see that my rank globally is 1.5%. So you definitely want to hit it really hard and get that rank up. All right. So here's your podcasting launch checklist. Go ahead, take advantage of our group. Ask everybody here to listen to your podcast, leave a rating, leave a, leave a review. We would be honored to help you through this process. So take advantage of it. Ask your friends, ask your family, get that word out. Episodes added and they are ready to go. You also have your cover art and everything is up uploaded in your podcast info so you've got the name of your show you've got your description you've got your cover art and you are ready to launch with your categories and basically you're all ready to launch what you can start to do is go to directories right now we are on buzzsprout so this is going to look different depending on the host that you choose to use but what i recommend you do is go to directories and you're going to see them all listed really this is pretty standard no matter what host you're using but go through and press get listed on every single one and follow the prompts. Some are as easy as literally clicking in and literally pressing a button that says like push to, to pod chaser. Some of them are gonna require some additional steps. Okay, so I already went through and all the ones that were the click of a button and just super easy to do, I've already done because those are just really simple. Other ones like Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts are gonna be a little bit more uh, steps involved. I'm not even going to say complicated because it's super simple. So what you're going to do is you're going to press get listed and it's going to tell you exactly what to do. Okay. So you're going to copy your feed. You're going to go to Apple podcast connect. You're going to need to log in. So for myself, I actually need my cl clients login. So I'm not going to be able to show you inside, but this shows you exactly how to do it. So you're going to click new show. Okay, you're gonna add existing show RSS feed. That's literally what I just copied. So you're just gonna paste it there. Like it says, make my feed publicly available. Give everyone access. Yes, you're gonna press add. Now this is the part you don't wanna forget. <laughs> I have some clients who are like, I pressed add and then it, it wasn't up for a couple days. No, you've gotta make sure that right here you, could you submit this button that says submit for review. And here, it says typically this takes about five business days, but could take up to two weeks. I've had it also take like one hour. So just you're at the discrepancy of Apple Podcasts. So just be patient. Uh, and then once you're finished, you can press I've submitted to Apple Podcasts, but it only takes like five minutes. So not super complicated. If you back it up, there's going to be um, similar s steps for different ones. So you basically need your RSS feed. You need a login to like Google Podcast Manager, and then you need to check um, Google Podcasts for your 
for your podcast once you've done that. So just go through, follow the steps. All the hosts are really thorough with telling you how to do it, but you're going to want to do this the day that your episodes go live. So I recommend doing it as soon as possible, uh, getting them listed and then continue checking back on Apple podcasts for your show. And hopefully it drops really soon. But if you have any troubles, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know, but it's usually a pretty harmless process. Enjoy. You've made it. You have just finished the two hour podcast masterclass, and I'm so grateful to be a part of this journey with you. If you've experienced any value at all during this program, please head over to testimonial.to slash Jamie. You're going to be able to take three minutes out of your day and just leave any type of feedback that you took away from this experience and what you're launching, how you're launching your show, all the golden nuggets, like feel free to share. I can't wait. And I would really appreciate that. And also to send you your podcast launch plaque. So please be sure to do that. And after that, I want to continue this relationship. You do not have to go out this alone or wait for my next YouTube video to drop. Head on over and join us on Bound CEOs Academy. It'll be linked below this video. You'll get access to $10,000 plus worth of programs, coaching, training, and also other members who are going through similar journeys just like you. And so be sure to head over to the Academy for the full masterclass and what happens post-launch. What do you do to get guests on your show? Two guest podcast. How do you create workflows and actually grow your business from your podcast? All of that is inside the Academy and you have access to it now. So can't wait to hear from you. Please share a link with me to your podcast so that I can be one of your first raving fans. Can't wait to see you inside. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. We're going to be launching new YouTube videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays every single week. So all just showing behind the scenes, showing as I'm implementing the things in my business, as I'm learning, as I'm growing, as I'm teaching my clients, I will be having you along the way on this journey with us. So can't wait to see you in the next video and hit that. Bye. Steve's laughing at me. Steve's laughing at me. This is going to be a blooper clip. <coughs> Don't forget to subscribe, but now I can't talk. Don't forget to hit subscribe on my channel. We're going to be posting YouTube videos every Tuesday and Thursday from here on out, just really documenting the journey. So I'm going to be taking you on this journey with me, sharing behind the scenes, teaching as I'm learning, as I'm implementing for myself, I actually deleted my entire CRM so that I could just document the process of building a new one. So I'm going to do crazy shit like that. You're going to have access to that along with all the other things that I'm teaching my clients. So be sure to hit subscribe and can't wait to catch you in the next video.